I am a liberal arts major, and I'm going to talk to you tonight about neuroscience, so that's a little bit dangerous. But four days after I became Vice Chief of Staff of the Army in August of 2008, Medical Command came in to me and briefed me about what the most prolific wounds were of the war. Having spent two tours in Iraq, almost 24 months, I was sure it was going to be those soldiers that I saw who were shot who lost arms, legs, or multiple limbs. When in fact I looked at the chart, 2% had had serious burns, 4% had had spinal cord injuries, 10% had been shot, lost an arm, a leg, or multiple limbs, and a total of 36% had traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress. When I left as vice, Four years later, in 2007, all those numbers remained the same, except for one. Traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress in 2012 were 67% of our most serious wounds. This problem is huge, given the fact that 2.6 million Americans have deployed to fight these wars. They are not only large numbers in the military, with just over 316,000 soldiers, sailors, airmen, or Marines having been diagnosed with traumatic brain injury, and as many as 25% of that 2.6 million have post-traumatic stress. That would take us to somewhere over 250,000. Now, those numbers are large in civilian life also. I did not know this when I started this work, but 2.7 million Americans every single year suffer a concussive event or traumatic brain injury. And 8% of the United States population is expected to have post-traumatic stress sometime during their life. Total of 8%. Yet we do not understand the biology of traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress, or most of the diseases and injuries of the brain. And I believe there's reasons for that. The reason is the brain is difficult. It's not as simple as the heart, a simple organ in the middle of our chest, meant to do one thing, pump blood to the brain so we can be who we are. The brain is extremely difficult. And when you have a problem with the brain, it's like going back in medical time 40 years or 50 years, and in some cases, even 60 years, because we don't understand the biology. Some of you remember a dust up down at Fort Lewis not too long ago, where doctors disagreed over the diagnosis of post-traumatic stress or personality disorder. Those were doctors who were psychiatrists, who had a professional disagreement because the only thing we have to make that diagnosis is something called DSM-5, which is 25 questions. For traumatic brain injury, if you were to fall leaving the theater today and went to an emergency room, you'd be given a Glasgow coma test, a numerical score, and based on the numbers you had, you would be told whether or not you had mild, moderate, or severe traumatic brain injury. In some instances, you would be told that you had mild traumatic brain injury and you would not be able to work another day in your life. We just don't understand the biology and we don't have good patient outcome metrics. And why? I believe the reason is right here. Only 10 to 20 percent of published science studies are reproducible. Now, what does that mean? That is the reason why every six months, coffee's good for you, coffee's bad for you. <laughs> Th that is the reason why 10 days ago it was OK to eat eggs and bacon. The cholesterol wasn't really such a bad thing. And that is the reason why we're even arguing today 
whether women over 40 should get a mammography every single year to prevent breast cancer. 10 to 20 percent. And why is that? It's because research is done in silos, individual silos. And researchers are protected. They collect data, much of that with public money. That data becomes their data. They publish peer-reviewed, referee journal articles, and they do not share their data sets. And when they publish their studies, they publish the data that supports their findings. They're not required to lay out the entire data set so people can look at it, check it, see if some of the things they ignored might not support the findings they had. And it's worse than that, because inside these individual silos where we research diseases are many other smaller silos. The United States Army spent over $1 billion on traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress research since 2007. And what did we get? We still have Glasgow coma. And it doesn't work as a diagnosis for traumatic brain injury. We went from DSM-4 to DSM-5, and all we did was add three questions. And that's because of the silos within silos. Because we go ahead and fund somebody to do a study, but we never combine those data sets using the tools we have today because the data belongs to the individual. That's why my organization, One Mind, is dedicated to this. These open science principles. I will not fund a single cent for any research to researchers who will not follow these principles. And these principles, quite frankly, are being accepted by genomics and genomists, by biologists, some biologists. This is the open science movement. A movement that says, share your databases. Don't let intellectual property get in the way of helping the patient. Because the patient should be at the center of everything we do. Thank you.